Okay, here we are today in this dark cupboard. It's always helpful. And we have a Valiant Turbo Max Pro. So you've got the display with no hot water. The hot tap is running in the kitchen. And this is what we've got. We have a symbol for hot water and this light. I, on the top of my head, I don't know what any of that means. So. Oh. Oof. Didn't sound very happy. We've got a fan running now. I think it probably overheated. That sounded like it got very hot. I'm going to try and film this all in one go. So I came in, I ran a hot tap in the kitchen. It got me that symbol and the boiler started doing this, just flashing this but nothing more. So then you saw I reset it. Now because this is a pro, we haven't got a display, yeah? It's light and it's lit. I'm turning you so you can hear. Okay, that sounded unhappy. I might need to go to the toilet now, so I'll wet myself. <laughs> no, but that didn't sound good, did it? Sounded like that boiler overheated. Yeah, that's like a million degrees there. That's cold. Outlet stone cold, that's absolutely blistering hot. So what does that tell you? I should tell you what it tells me, it's probably a block plate. This is the boiler. Let's uh, do a plate heat exchange on it. Okay, so I've still got the hot tap running. I've grabbed some tools in. First one I'm gonna do, take the case off. Power's off. So now I've got two hoses and an eight mil spanner. While that's doing its thing, I'm going to turn off the mains and I should hear the tap stop in the kitchen. So I'm keeping an eye on the pressure, it's at half a bar right now. Uh, got a drain off on there, drain off on there. The boiler is now near zero, so I'll isolate both of these. Now I'm going to pump the vessel and then I'm going to take the diverter out to get the plate out. Use a little extension piece. Okay, so this vessel's flat. So right now the noise you're hearing is all the water pumping out of it going into the bucket. To take the diverter out, it is not the way you have to do it. It is however the way I've learned to do it over the years and I like doing it this way. So I'm just pulling out all the clips. You're going to see why I take this diverter out. Move my bucket to catch that. I've also got a beach towel on the floor, and what I do here, I always undo both nuts and I lift the electrics up ever so slightly so no water can run into it, and then I'll tilt the diverter to get the water to run out of the boiler. So that seems pretty good. So now I'll wiggle the diverter off the plate. So there's the ball, there looks to be plenty of space above that and around that, so that should move fine without any problems. So, the reason I take the diverter out is simply to get to this nut a lot easier here. So everything else is ready, all the clips are off. Often this is the hardest connection to undo. And uh, always remember which way around this goes. 
it's very obvious when you're putting it back in on this one because of the threads here, but just, you know. Generally, when you're removing a plate, always remember which way. Easy. There we go, it's not piped up backwards. Otherwise we would now have a rather large flood. Now, this is how I do it. I wiggle this plate back and forth, which loosens these joints here because the plate moves inside them. And then I try to push it off. Bear in mind there's a beach towel on the floor here. The plate is out. Pour it into the bucket. You can see the chunks of debris in there. See it's all built up on the bottom there. So it always builds up in the direction of water flow. So it comes through this diverter, comes through the diverter and into there. That's the way in and this is the way out. As you see the way out is clear. Torian is dirty. Quite easy to see that. Now looking at this and how clean all of this is, I think this has had a plate very recently. So anyway, let's get this cleaned. Okay, let's clarify a few things before we start. I have some PPE here. It's just a funnel that may or may not work, it's often that blue container, it might help me get it in there. And um, my skin is, um, that's super hard geezer skin, so in all seriousness, don't get it in your eye, protect your hands, any splashes will scar you. I have a scar up here that you probably can't see because the light's terrible from this stuff. To stop all you uh, keyboard warriors, look what this has a picture of here on the container, okay? Blockages in pipes, toilets, and drains. Has a picture of a drain. And we're going to put it down a, to get over it. Okay, so I did video me descaling this, but um, my phone got too hot and crashed. So and it's quite simple. All I do is add the spirits of salt, and I'll just keep pouring it in, letting it do its job and I stop once it stops cleaning. So once it stops bubbling up, that's when I stop. I've cleaned all my tools and everything I used. So my gloves and everything that got spirits of salt on them are now washed and cleaned. And so is this. So I'm just gonna probably wash this now in the kitchen sink and I'll show you the results. So I'm just gonna fill it with cold water, make sure it's nice and clean, and then I'll show you the uh, image. Okay, so here's the plate now. This is the side that had the problem. Lovely and clean in there. I'll try and focus in there. Okay, lovely and clean in there. This is the other end of that. And this is the main side. I've obviously cleaned out everything. I don't know what this is there, but that is stuck on the bottom of that main side, that stuff. Anyway. That's a clean heat exchanger, and just unfortunately, the, cam the phone overheated when it was outside. It's in direct sunlight. Three washers, okay? Two three quarters for the diverter and one half inch for the main. I always replace them. Uh, I don't replace the O-rings unless they're knackered. So all I'm going to do with this is grease it really well. There is one thing to remember with these. If you're ever going to have a leak here, it's one of the worst leaks you can have. It's going to be the mains water. It's going to pop off the heat exchanger in the middle of the night <laughs> after you've done the job, okay? That night, it's just going to pop off. So my tip for that is always put on the aqua sensor first because that's the one that always pops off. Put that one on first and get the clip in and then try and force the plate off it. If it holds, you're good to go. If it doesn't, you need to sort it out. So plate going in. Don't know if I'm blocking it here, but aqua sensor felt like it went on. Get the clip, squeeze it together a little bit. Make it just a little bit tighter than it was. And again, I'm going to push the plate onto the aqua sensor and put the clip in. Now, without doing anything else, I'm going to try and push it off. It doesn't go off, 
is safe, that's not going to pop off in the middle of the night and be like a surprise. Do this connection to the plate first, okay, and then try and force the plate off it to make sure that's grabs, because otherwise that'll pop off in the middle of the night and flood the house. Surprise. All right, so now I've just got to get the diverter in. Now, before I get the diverter in, I need to tighten that nut and then get the diverter in. Fiber washer off that. Leave that nice and loose, that one. This top pipe will twist in the heat exchanger, this pipe here, when you're tying it on the diverter valve. So you want to be super aware of that. Sorry, I've left it. The fiber will show you. You want to be super aware of that and try and minimize it, okay? Because the more you twist it and it turns in the heat exchanger, the more likely you are to, I mean, to fill it up and take this off, you find you've got a leak in there. While I was outside, I came and took the bucket from here to flush the plate out. So I've already taken the drain down hoses off. First things first, let me dry it up a little bit. And I'm gonna do the mains first, Check, test the mains. Okay, that's the mains on. Nothing catastrophic has happened. So now we'll get some water in there. One and a half bar in there. Nothing appears to be leaking. And for the first bit here, we're just venting the boiler. A lot of air. Pump still a bit airy, but the boiler is remaining lit and providing hot water. Okay, so the boiler is fixed, provides hot water. It's now time to do 26 nines. So we're gonna do our fags, yeah? So we're gonna check the flu, air, gas, and safety. So when we say check the flu, we're gonna do visual check and the combustion analysis. Okay, make sure all that's good. Air, if it's ventilation, if it's necessary, obviously this doesn't need any ventilation. Um, gas, we're gonna check the burner pressure, and on this you need to check high and low. Um, and safety, we're gonna check the FFD by isolating the gas and making sure that the boiler locks out and stops passing gas through the gas valve. So one of the most important tools used on this job was not what you expect. It was this button to hold the door open because it keeps closing and there's no light in this cupboard. Okay, there we go. One fixed working boiler. Obviously, I don't know if you saw the water, no, you didn't see. The water from this boiler is absolutely filthy. Um, but it is fixed, it is working, and it is safe. So let's get on with the next one.